This is Zach with Tevis Architects out uh, on the site of our net, first net zero home uh, in Trace Forest out here outside of Lake Quivira. Um, it's been a couple days. Our contractors have been hard at work. They've been staying busy. So I wanted to give you a quick project update to see where we're at. So you can see we've got most of our uh, forms up on the footings now. Um, we're looking here at the garage. Uh, you might notice something a little different. Uh, this is somewhat new to the, the building trade um, and it's a good thing so I want to talk about it. You see those big squares right there in the middle of the what will be our uh, garage slab. Those are two big pier foundations. So why do we need pier foundations for in a garage slab? Well because we have so much excavated dirt especially around the perimeter of this slab um, garage floors have a, a tendency to settle uh, a lot worse than a regular foundation floor does. All that dirt around the perimeter slides down, packs down, and those are the garage slabs that have that kind of hollow sound to them, um, especially when you tap on them, uh, you'll, you'll hear it. It'll clink, clink, clink. Um, that's the void that's underneath it. So here we have a suspended slab, basically, that's supporting the weight of, in this case, um, three vehicles. So. Uh, this has become required in a lot of parts of the country, and we're doing it here uh, just because it's a good practice um, to put a couple of these big uh, support columns uh, at various points across the slab. They'll, we'll connect those with a grade beam going across um, so that when, not if, but when um, our footings, uh, the, the unexcavated dirt underneath kind of levels out and, and any of that dirt settles in there, uh, we're not going to get any cracks. We're not going to have any settling across that um, garage floor at all. And we'll also go ahead, once our walls are formed here, uh, we'll pin all along the perimeter before we pour that garage floor, uh, just to tie that whole thing all together. This is also something that's not uh, typical, so I want to talk about it here real quick. Um, you'll see this large void here, and there's not any doors into or out of it. Um, I think when we do our phase two house, uh, we may use a space like this for more of a storm room or a shelter, um, but this will all be filled. And here's the reason I want to talk about it. This is actually our, our porch, uh, front porch on the, the front side of the house. Um, and a lot of times builders will kind of cut corners when it comes to a porch. They'll just do a turn down slab or if you're lucky, maybe a trench footing. Um, if you're not lucky, they might just do slab right on grade. Um, there's no structural reinforcement typically um, and of course because we've excavated all the way you know nine foot down along the exterior walls here when that dirt settles all of your porches and patios settle with it uh, those slabs will crack um, all the water they collect then pours back towards the foundation instead of away from it so for the patio especially one this size uh, we've gone ahead and done a full foundation wall all the way down below frost depth, um, fully reinforced to support that foundation slab so that we don't have any settling and no issues coming up as we approach our house. So I came over here to the front of the house because I wanted to talk about one thing. Um, it's kind of unique, I guess, for the process that we're going through with um, us doing a design build project where your, your architect, your designer is also your builder. Um, we have a lot of uh, control over quality. We have a lot of control over changes. Um, you know, when we originally designed the front of this house, uh, we thought we'd be a lot deeper than we are on the site here. And because we made an effort to try to preserve so many of these trees, we didn't really over excavate any further than we needed to. And after we got the hole in the ground, we kind of came out here, we looked at where our grades were and we said, you know what? we don't have to do window wells out here and we could open this up and we could get a lot more natural light down into some of these areas of our basement. So as you can see, um, we actually made kind of a last minute uh, design change. Let's see if I can get around here. Show us. Um, so we've added a large uh, window right here that will will be basically at our finished grade. Um, when we're done and then all of our corner windows um, at the end and our window wells into our basement uh, bedrooms 
um, those all have to be egress rated and so again instead of coming up inside of a, a window well or um, you know really messing with the grade of our site in order to get those to come out we kind of let the site tell us what we needed to do as far as where we could get windows in and and how our grade was going to flow and that's definitely not typical um, for the process of home building in the U in the U.S. today, um, and it's it's something that I think uh, I wish anyway as an architect happened more often. I want to take a few minutes to talk about kind of what's going on um, in the center of the basement down here. Uh, you see these large uh, squares of concrete. Those are uh, reinforced um, pier supports. Those will be steel columns that will come up inside of some of our basement walls. Um, those will support the, the steel beams overhead that a lot of our floor joists will be resting on um, to span across. You'll also notice there's a couple spots in the foundation wall here, I'm trying to zoom in, um, where we have a sleeve coming through. Um, that's to allow us to tie our uh, radon mitigation system, um, all of our perimeter uh, drain tile and everything into uh, the basement sump. Um, that way we can make sure that we don't ever have any floods, we don't ever have any water in the basement of this. And if we do have, you know, our 50 year flood and we get a little moisture that's uh, infiltrating down along our foundation walls, it has a way to get out and, and a way to treat it. So um, this is a, a few of the things that kind of go into um, preparation, I guess, that once we pour the basement slab in here, nobody ever sees. Um, nobody knows it's there, but it's, it's part of the upfront planning that went into making sure that this all worked and uh, was a, an efficient and well-planned uh, foundation.